back EMF. So what is actually a back EMF? Back EMF is something like an opposing quantity, so that will actually eventually come as a drop uh, uh, in case of KVL. So uh, we have something like a VB, which is uh, EB, which is important, and back EMF is something to do with it's a proportional to speed. If we have, uh, uh, this is also called a speed voltage basically. So it's proportional to speed. And what is the speed over here? It's omega basically, the rotating speed. So we have equal to something like K1, constant of proportionality, which is this thing, or we can say it is d theta by dt. Or in case of Laplace transform, we can simply say k uh, theta or put s over here. So this is something to do with the back EMF and equation one can be rewritten as i into r plus s l plus k1 s k1 theta. This is equation two. Now let's come to the mechanical side. Now mechanical side, what is the motor actually doing? It's consuming electrical power, of course it's something like playing with the uh, losses anyhow, but anyhow that particular quantity has to be ignored over here. So what actually is on the rotor side is the production of torque, a mechanical torque. Now mechanical torque, remember, is proportional to the current. Greater the current, greater is the magnetic field in the conductor and eventually greater is the torque. So, this is changed into equality by introducing a constant of proportionality K2. This is equation 3. Now, we can simply replace this I by T by K2 from equation 3. So this equation can be expressed as uh, T by K2 into R plus SL plus SK1 theta. This is equation 4. Now, on the mechanical side, there is a torque, so the equation is simple. I will write uh, directly in terms of Laplace transform. So we have S squared J into theta plus SB theta. Or we can say T is equal to S squared J plus S D into theta. This is equation 5. Now let's see what we are actually trying to find out. We are trying to find out the transfer function. So we are trying to find out what is the actual output in fact. Now irrespective of what happens, the output quantity we are interested in is in the mechanical output actually. It's not the torque actually, it's of course the displacement because the torque is driving that load. Now, driving means it's a driving force and as a result, it causes an angular displacement. So, in fact, the transfer function we are interested in is output by input quantity, which is the electrical supply actually or the supply voltage. So, in this case, what we are trying to do is to get a ratio of theta by E and that will eventually uh, form the transfer function. Now, from equation 5, what we can actually uh, get is torque. Now that torque is substituted over here. So we can say that substitute equation 5 uh, in equation 4 for t. So we have e is equal to 40. It is s square j plus s d into theta divided by, of course, k2. And we have s l plus r plus s k1 theta. So theta on one side, so that takes common, and we have one over k s square plus j plus uh, s square j plus s d into s l plus r plus this in a bracket term, put it in bracket, and then we have s. K1. Now this is not the spring constant, this is the constant of proportionality and eventually what we have is theta. Get the ratio and you will get the transfer function, then simplify according to the rules of the transfer function when you are given the numerical values of 4. 
So this uh, is the Gaussian function of electromechanical system. Now let's draw some sort of uh, comparison between the electrical elements and mechanical elements. For example, I'll just rewrite things. V T is equal to L D I by D T. Now if I can say that the current is the rate of change of charges, so we can say that L is equal to D square Q, where Q is the charge. And similarly, this is for R, it is IT into R. Now this is R, D 